Councils have been trying to uh, support business as best they can with grant schemes and trying to come up with obviously um, projects that can help us get back into uh, the offices, into work, into our hospitality venues as quickly as possible. And Paul and Pete can tell us uh, what partnership work, if any, they've been undertaken with the government around the vaccination processes and so on. Um, but before we get into that, Pete, I want to start with you. In terms of Preston, um, how do we think the city has uh, performed? What are the fallouts from the last nine, ten months? Uh, and, you know, are you seeing anything particularly difficult that, that we should be aware of and, and we're going to have to try and, and, uh, uh, and cope with uh, in the immediate term? Yeah, I, morning or afternoon, everybody. Um, I, I think for me, the, the, the first thing, the fallout is, is there's probably still a lot of unknowns. Um, you know, we're all working really hard to try and Come to some kind of conclusion and 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 be ready for whatever day we we, we arrive at. Um, it is difficult for for all local authorities. Um, we've had lots of staff who've had to adapt very very quickly, who've had to redeploy from their normal work, be that planning or environmental health or whatever it might be. And those guys have really come up trumps in terms of the work they've had to do, as I say, and, and in terms of that that redeployment um, role that they've had to undertake. Um, and you know whether whether it's the uh, planning policy team who were who were having to uh, work on on a hub to, to pro provide food for people in the early stages, um, or indeed volunteering on the um, you know now on, on the testing station. So all those things have been have been quite difficult in testing, alongside doing their own work, you know, and, and ensuring that we make performance indicators um, on a routine basis. So some of those things have been have been quite difficult and, and trying. Um, we've got through it. There's, you know, we've emptied every bin. We've uh, we've done all the things that we do on a daily basis. Some of the more unpleasant tasks, you know, around the cemetery and the crematorium. But those are the things that that those are the services that people really, really want. And to try and keep that sense of normality through the last 12 months um, has been the, one of the main tasks, really, I suppose, of of local authorities. And I, I think we've succeeded in that. Where we go from here in terms of um, you know the future and, and what what may be uh, happening, um, yeah, we're guided by by central government of course, and and they're the ones with the the, the um, with the purse strings, and we have to adapt according to, to them and, and make it work. And I think there's been a lot of that sort of government have thrown stuff out there and said to us, you know, guys, you go make it work, mm. and that's not always been easy. Certainly um, in the early stages when we had those. And I'll be brutal, quite frankly, quite silly um, press conferences every night at 5 p.m. where they were throwing stuff out that we had to deal with and and, and undertake at nine o'clock the following morning. And people were on the phone at a minute past nine saying, well, Boris said this last night. What have you done about it? So, of course, those things were quite difficult early on. Um, but as I said, we, we've adapted. Uh, we, you know, the grants have all gone out to the businesses. And, and we're really now hoping that, that the sooner this is over, the better as everybody is. Um, and clearly the vaccinations coming on, on trial, on, on, on track, uh, have, have performed quite well. And, and we're hoping that that continues very, very quickly. Now, obviously, Pete, we're all aware that businesses right across sectors have been facing difficulties, whatever industry you're in, to be fair. Um, you know, everybody's sort of honed in on hospitality and retail. Uh, inevitably because they've probably been the hardest hit um, and, and of course we had some disappointing news didn't we about one of these shopping centres in the in the city yeah I mean we're clearly not the only ones you know everybody's suffering in terms of retail and, and the world is changing isn't it you know and it's about convenience once upon a time we had the you know the butcher the baker the greengrocer all on the high street we all went to Asda or Sainsbury's because that was more convenient and now, of course, what we're seeing now is that the uh, the convenience of, of online shopping and online retail um, is, is probably having a, a bigger impact on the high streets as a result, not just of, of COVID, but, but over the years, re retail has been in decline. Yeah, we had some bad news over the past day or so with St. George's Shopping Centre in Preston. 
Um, we're still confident that the shopping centre will remain open as it's, you know, the sort of complexities around ownership, etc., cetera, um, are the ones that, that have gone into administration. And I know the chief exec is, is in meetings this morning um, trying to get some more clarity around that. The, you know, people are going to have to realise that the world is changing in terms of the high street. Um, the days, you know, and we're all going to, we're all in it together. We're all going to have to be part of it. You know, councils can't do it on their own. The days perhaps of, of landlords and, and um, property owners demanding 10, 15 year leases are probably gone. And, you know, if you're going to open a shop, are you really going to sign up to a 15 year lease? No, you're not. So perhaps the days of two and three year leases need to be part of that package. We, we, that we, we might then see um, a more vibrant, um, quicker changing um, high street uh, with you know different different offers uh, coming on, on on stream more quickly, and also that will give the opportunity for the yeah, the smaller the SMEs and, and and the more independents to be able to perhaps take up those the offers of two and three year leases. Um, but that that comes as part of a package with you know with changing it to more service orientated high street perhaps with health as we're trying desperately in Preston, looking at some kind of health hub. Um, and, and really it, it's about wanting to make people come into the city centre for more than just, you know, to buy the socks at Marks and Spencer's. Mm -hmm. And whether that's events, entertainment, for me, it's all about, you know, sights, sounds, smells in a city centre. Mm -hmm. People attract people. And I think that's important. And I think we need to start to give people the space within city centres um, I'm not saying this is a, a council uh, policy, but whether we start to look at, you know, reduction in traffic in the city centre and, and make everything more walkable. One of the things that we're proud of in Preston is, is you know, the city living strategy and, and trying to get more people to live in the city centre. I know there's, there's lots of talk about, you know, 15, 20 minute uh, places. I think we already have that in Preston. Uh, we, we just need the, uh, the, uh, the living space to, to show that that's the case. We'll get into perhaps a little bit more around you know, how we could see the city centre developing in the future when we start to talk about recovery. But let me bring Paul into the conversation at this point and just ask similar really in terms of the, the South Ribble uh, experience over the past nine, ten months. Hi, Frank. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, well, it's certainly been a, a baptism of fire, as, you, as most know, I was only elected as leader of South Ribble in May 2019. And then literally six months later, um, a pandemic lands and it's been certainly challenging, but, it, you know, we're quick to learn. Um, where are we now? South Ribble, you know, and, and I think Lancashire as a whole, Frank, is in a, is in a, is in a strong position. I think the, the way the local authorities, all the local authorities have come together um, during the pandemic through the the Lancashire Resilience Forum has been, has been second to none. And I think, I hope everyone does, does associate with that, that the, the response in Lancashire has been brilliant. And I think that was just proven by the rollout of the vaccine. By far the best performing county in the, in the, in, in the country, as far as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned. And that's because the, the, the infrastructure and the, 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 of, the, of the county did work. And I mean, the political infrastructure and the business infrastructure, everyone just came together and dusted down and made it work. Um, it's been challenging though, uh, absolutely it's been challenging, but you know, even here in South Ribble, we've, we've divvied out, you know, 23, 24 million quids worth of, of grants to our local businesses. We've got, you know, great community um, initiatives out there now. We've got great business initiatives out there now. And this is where one of the, moving forward, we're already in recovery. We've said that earlier, we're already in the recovery phase now. We've got the best, the, the, the best relationships and intelligence with our, all our local businesses than we've ever had. And that's through the pandemic. The, fam, the pandemic has forced that upon us. But that is a real positive because it means now we can work together closely and make sure that we recover. Because by heck, we've got one hell of a challenge over the next two or three years. We really have. And it's the business community that's been hit hardest, hasn't it, clearly, um, in the local economy. And we need to recover together. So... We've got to, we've just got to, to dust down and sort this out now and come out with some really wide ranging, you know, outside the box thinking and get some investment into our businesses, investment into our, uh, into our county and pull through this. And we're not going to have a second chance, Frank. We've got to do it now. Uh, and Paul, how, how important do you see Preston City Centre's recovery to uh, South Rib? 
I, 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 I think it's critical. I, I'm on record as saying it before, you know, I'm, I'm not all my uh, colleagues in Lancashire may agree, but Preston is at the, the heart of central Lancashire, isn't it? It's the, the big city in the centre of the, of the county. And if Preston recovers and the, the city recovers and the high street recovers in, in, in Preston, and that's only going to have a positive impact, particularly on the boroughs that surround it. So, you know, in Ribble Valley, in Chorley, in South Ribble, clearly we, we need Preston to recover. And that's hence why we work so closely together, always. Uh, and Paul, just in terms of, you said you're in recovery mode already. Uh, we've seen, you know, some tremendous initiatives come forward pre-pandemic uh, around the city deal that was secured. Yeah. Um, so connectivity is improved anyway, infrastructure regenerated, uh, but still more to do in your view? Loads more to do. So, you know, we need to we need to dust down. We're trying to sort out the city deal. We're trying to bring more from the city deal. You know, it's the, the concept of the city deal is great, but we need to can we do more? You know, and that, that's what we need to be really challenging ourselves. And we've got to get investment into Lancashire, Frank. We have to. And. I'm fed up with the lack of um, a mayor for Lancashire being used as an excuse by government, not for inward investment. You know, let's get it sorted. Now's the opportunity. We have to. And you, you just need to, we're all driving around the county now that the state of the infrastructure is shocking. And that's not a political criticism, Frank. It's, the, it's a reality of years of austerity and lack of investment in the county. And we need to sort it out. We need to get an, an IC infrastructure and the links between all our boroughs in, within the county has been the has been a critical element now in this business recovery for our for all of us together. Okay, I, I think there's some potentially some you know national infrastructure projects that are going to hugely benefit Lancashire. Actually, not least HS2 and, and Preston City Centre could be uh, majorly advantaged if uh, if some of those plans come to fruition. But Listen, you've raised the, the issue of the mayor. I wasn't going to get into it so early because I don't want you... Glad you're in separate rooms. don't want you having too much of a fallout so early in the conversation. Um, but listen, this is, you know, something that we've been talking about forever. Um, Chesley's on the call. He's heard me wax and lyrical about the need for devolved powers for years and years now, and, and, and others who have joined us today likewise. Um, West Yorkshire are about to get a mayor, um, so we will be surrounded by big conurbations who have, uh, whether we like it or not, powerful figureheads who can champion their areas very effectively. Um, now, Paul, you know, I thought that point that you made, we shouldn't be using not having a mayor as an excuse, uh, is a reasonable one. Um, but what do you see uh, as the realistic uh, and pragmatic opportunity for Lancashire, given the fact that, as I say, we're going to be surrounded by uh, metropolitan mayors uh, over in the Pennines, Greater Manchester, Liverpool City region, and so on. So, so Frank, I um, I do not accept the government's ch challenge to Lancashire that it, local government reorganisation should be tied to the establishment of a combined authority in a mayor. I don't buy it. We, Lancashire has absolutely proven over the last 12 months through the pandemic that the constituent parts, the county council, the two unitaries, the 12 districts can all work together really, really well. We've proved it beyond doubt. So there's no, but the problem we had is 18 months ago, the government said, you're not having a mayor unless you do, unless you agree to local government reorganisation. That's either three or four unitary councils in Lancashire being formed. And I wholeheartedly disagree. Bring forward a mayor. I want an elected mayor. I think the majority of the people in the county of Lancashire want an elected mayor. And we constitute it in a way that it works with the districts and the county council and the two unitaries. You know, look at London. They, they said it was too big, Frank, right? They said it was too unwieldy with those number of authorities. London's got 32 boroughs. That works. Manchester's got, I think, is it, is it 16? I can't remember. Is it 16 constituents to the combined authority in Manchester? I can't remember the exact figures. But all Lancashire is asking for is something similar. And I, and I absolutely guarantee you, if an elected mayor is brought in and a combined authority, it will work. Whatever the political persuasion of the leaders of this great county, we will make it work. And it's critical for the county. So I'm hoping governments appears to be getting cold feet slightly with, 
local government reorganisation um, and the, the proposals that were sent down um, by the County Council last year. But that doesn't mean they should get cold feet about introducing an elected mayor. I, I, we desperately need one as a county. and I think we just need to divorce it from, um, from local government reorganisation, which, as you well know yourself, Frank, may never come. You know, getting the in county of Lancashire to agree to something is going to be a challenge. So let's just bring on the mayor for me. Bring on the mayor. OK. I think uh, the assessments in terms of the appetite for local government reorganisation is probably accurate. Pete, to be fair, because the government are now going to look at the next four years and think we haven't got time for that sort of thing. Uh, you know, we need to crack on with economic recovery programmes and we need to be working as effectively as we can with, with partners. And the one thing I would say uh, that ought to have been learned from the uh, government and those in the corridors of power at Whitehall is where they have actually been able to have conversations at a local or regional level and implement um, some quite innovative strategies and that sat in Liverpool at the moment. So, you know, the test and trace system that was adopted in Liverpool enabled them to get into tier two uh, as a city. So I think there is an appetite for more partnership work, but I'm not convinced, as Paul says, there's an appetite for local government reorganisation. Where would you take the debate next, Peter? I, I think there is an appetite for it. I'm not certain whether, you know, and, and Paul's already alluded to about timing and all the rest of it, yeah. but I, I certainly think there is an appetite for it. I think our business partners want uh, a single voice screaming and shouting for, at the top for, for Lancashire. I, I think that's, I think that's beyond doubt now. I think, I think that's, that's what is needed. And we've seen, although it might not have been so comfortable for the government, but I think we've seen just how some high profile mayors can actually um, you know, hold their corner and speak and speak for their particular area. Um, I, I don't think this system works. Um, is there ever a right time to, to change the system? I, again, I don't think there ever is a right time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with anything Paul said, uh, and what he said is perfectly acceptable. But we've already got the likes of, of Lancaster and South Cumbria um, in a way steaming ahead. And my danger is, is that my, or the, my thoughts are that the, the danger is, is is that the government say, well, okay, then you guys can't get your act together, but let's do, let's work with the ones who can. And for me, you know, Lancaster should should be part of the of the Lancashire combined authority, and, and and we should be looking in terms of the you know the unity status and and, and local government reorganisation that, that they are part of of the, the wider Lancashire rather than South Cumbria. I understand, in, you know, there are lots of things around health and all the rest of it as to why Lancashire, why Lancaster would go with South Cumbria, but I'm not certain that's the right model. So, yeah, I mean, I, I it, it must be incredibly frustrating looking from the outside at this and at, at us, you know, minor politicians who, who can't, who are ferrets in the sack and who can't get our act together on this. And we've been talking about it for such a long time now. Um, but forgive me, you know, I think if you look at Manchester, and for those of you who may be from these part, those parts, is there a great deal of difference between Bury and Oldham? Well, there isn't a great deal of difference between those two compared with, say, Ribble Valley and Blackpool. And there's such a vast difference between those two. You can almost understand why it's, it's so difficult to get that arrangement together. Um, I'm going to be really provocative now, but is there such a, a great deal of difference between... Uh, Leyland and Fullwood, I would suggest not. And in which case, perhaps we need to start to look along those lines a little bit, you know. And, and for me, as I say, no, no time's the right time. I think we need to get on with it. I understand why government have got cold feet. You know, nobody's going to stand on, a, on an election platform and say, vote for me because I'm going to reorganise local government. Sadly, that's just not going to happen. Um, it just isn't sexy enough for anybody to be really interested. Um, ultimately, what people want, you know, is delivery of services. And for us to be driving to um, a river or um, an artificial boundary uh, in Longridge or, or, or South Ribble and our bin wagons having to turn around because they, they, they can't go down the same street, because quite frankly, you will never get the public to understand that. And I think that's th those are the sorts of practical day-to-day -day things that, that people want to see a change and want to see uh, better services. Thanks, Peter. We don't want to get into a parish council scenario here and uh, end up going viral. Wouldn't do us any harm at downtown, but we'd, yeah, we want you two guys to survive. So we'll move on 
on the subject where you do agree, which is an elected mayor. And again, I don't think you get any argument from anyone else on the call today that we all witness uh, and evidence the, the power, as you say, Pete, actually, of you know that figurehead being able to champion an area. So whether it be Andy Burnham, Steve Rotherham, Andy Street in the West Midlands, um, and on occasion they've held the feet of the government to fire, uh, I think better than, than, than perhaps other politicians, if I can put it that way. Um, but more importantly, you know, it is about winning that investment, isn't it? You know, it's okay having uh, the bum fights with government from time to time, but ultimately it's about how you can win bigger prizes because you have a system in place that the government is confident can deliver. Uh, and the one thing I will say is that at least over the last 10 months, Lancashire has been more coherent in terms of its approach. Uh, Paul's mentioned the vaccination rollout. We've established uh, alongside the County Council uh, an all-party parliamentary group and the MPs are now working together far more closely than has been the case in the past. Uh, and as you have pointed out, you know, you've been working very closely to ensure that the county uh, have been able to deliver uh, around the pandemic. So it's certainly glass half full, Paul, isn't it? We've got more to be uh, positive about than perhaps has been the case two, even 18 months ago, two years ago. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. I remember when I, I, was, I was new uh, um, and I started going to the the meetings with government and my colleague, Lancashire leader colleagues discussing um, local government organisation, you'd think would never get anywhere. You'd think that Lancashire leaders could never agree. I think, what was it that, that Jeff said? You know, couldn't even, even agree what day it was at times. And I wholeheartedly disagree with that with, with, with that view because we've, we've pulled together fantastically well and we need to embrace that now. And I think we've proven to government, you know, if you remember... Remember back to the, the autumn when we remember having all these detailed discussions about additional grants for lockdowns and going into tier and three and four and Lancashire came together. It was hard work over three or four days, but we actually did a deal, if you remember, before the some of the combined authorities did, Frank. You know, so the we came together because it was for the best of the, the county of Lancashire. And you know, just, just to you know, there's no with combined authorities, I think one of the problems that we all have up and down the country is this preset judgment on what something should look like. So, you know, if, for example, you know, Pete mentioned about the, the Bay Unitary Authority um, bid that's gone in, well, fine, the, the Bay Unitary bid goes through, they can join the Lancashire Combined Authority if they want. I'm from Barrow, Barrow's my team. You know, Barrow used to be in Lancashire. So, you know, why, why, is, why, why couldn't the Bay Unitary Authority, for example, be party, part of the, um, the Lancashire Combined Authority, because I tell you what, most people from Barrow and South Lakeland travel south for business, they don't travel north. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a fact. And the, the so let's, the, the, the art of the possible is quite exciting. And I am really challenging now that we push forward with our combined authority uh, discussions with government because it's in the best interest and it will assist greatly in Lancashire's recovery and its business recovery. And I think we should brave, be brave enough now. Let's get the elections over with in May because they are a little bit of noise that is, that's in the way. But come the 7th of May, we need to get this combined authority established. And I think we have a, this is a chance, Frank, to do it and do it now because we've proved we can work together in the best interests of the county. Thanks, Paul. And Peter, you know, pick up on that point. You did do very well in terms of the settlement. Uh, uh, and I think the agreement was certainly before Greater Manchester uh, were able to do their deal. Um, I think it was probably announced around the same time as the Liverpool City region deal. Um, but then if you look at that, if you look at the city deal that you've talked about previously, uh, and then if you look at the recovery plan and the Lancashire Independent Economic Review that's currently taking place, I actually feel that we're in a much better place in terms of being prepared and having evidence-based projects to go to the government with than has been the case previously. And one of the criticisms I've often made of Lancashire is that it's been a bit piecemeal in its approach to this stuff. So, you know, there, there has been a strategy, um, but the tactics haven't been nimble and flexible enough at times. I think, Peter, we're in a better place now, aren't we, given what we've been doing over the last 10 months? Yeah, we are. And, you know, it's about having those the strategy and the plan in place ready to take down to government. And, you know, we've seen that through... Uh, the, the town's fund 
um, hopefully shortly and very successful news. Um, you know, I'm working both, both as Paul has said, with, with the, the public sector together, but also with the private sector, you know, and, and Preston Partnership and how, how we've been ready uh, and the city investment plan is, is there in place. And absolutely that, that is there ready to take to, to whoever may be necessary. Um, whether, whether that is an elected mayor or whether, whether it's to go back down to, uh, back down to Whitehall to talk with them. I mean, for me, I, one of the things I've learned over the past couple of years is I've always been quite shy about, say, you mentioned HS2 earlier. Mm. Uh, that will bring enormous benefits for Preston. And I've always been sort of reticent or quite shy about the fact that, well, will it do the same for Burnley or for Blackpool or, or for, you know, or, or for Blackburn? And I've always been mindful of, of not shouting that really from the rooftops in, in terms of how, how well it will do for Preston. But I've been told both by, you know, when talking with the LEP and talking with other politicians, forget that, get on with it, because what's good for Preston will be good for Lancashire and vice versa, what's good for Lancashire will be good for Preston. But geographically, we are where we are, you know, we are the centre of Lancashire and therefore to, to be ready with, with the, the sort of uh, initiatives that you've mentioned and some of our more local ones, Absolutely. Then, then let's let's be ready for that, and and hopefully, if if a mayor or, or whoever comes along, um, fine. If it doesn't, we'll continue to. You know, we want people with as much passion for Preston as we have to come and join us and be part of that. The plans are in place. We're ready. Um, it now needs. You know, you're far better off having a plan and looking around for the money than searching for money and then thinking, right, let's start a plan now. We've got a bit of money. You know, so we're ready and waiting. Um, and, and, you know, in the background, there's lots and lots of work being undertaken, as you mentioned. Um, some of it isn't, you know, doesn't get in the public domain and isn't, isn't, isn't very uh, front page stuff, but absolutely we are ready for that. And I think the thing about Preston, you mentioned it earlier, Paul, it is a key uh, economic driver for the whole of the county, certainly for central Lancashire. And listen, HS2 isn't going anywhere else, is it? So <laughs> it'd be daft for us not to say we want the link into Preston. And, you know, that then gives connectivity to London. Uh, and despite the capital's difficulties at the moment, that will bounce back. It will be invested in. It will be um, a key driver again of, of our UK PLC economic recovery. Um, but when I see HS2 uh, and I see the the benefits of that and the opportunities that will come from that in terms of potential relocations, for example, of uh, government offices. You know, if you've got that sort of really good link, rail link, then that makes that a more uh, advantageous uh, product as far as government are concerned. And then there'll be other uh, multinational and national companies that are looking at Preston in a different way. But I think the, the great thing about Lancashire is, it, it's richness and diversity. So you look at that and then you look at the potential and opportunity you have in Blackpool to start to regenerate and, and redevelop something uh, around tourism. Uh, and again, I think what you're going to see certainly over the next five or six years, whether we like it or not, is a return to staycations uh, as they've been described. So there is uh, an opportunity and potential for, for Blackpool and again, the wider county because we've got some beautiful places to visit in Lancashire uh, and then I suppose the other thing I've mentioned um, and it's not the only thing that we've got going for it but be daft for us not to mention it is is our aerospace industry which you know again has been challenged but has still got great opportunity so Paul you, you know despite the fact that we've had all these challenges over the last 10 months despite the fact that perhaps we're not in exactly the place where we want to be in terms of political structures we are absolutely in a glass half full position, aren't we? We are. I, I think we've got a huge opportunity here because the, the, the government can do nothing other than invest now in the country to form the, and it's the bit through the business recovery for the economy. It, it, it has to, you know, and we are in a really strong position. And, you know, you talk about HS2 and yet it has to come to Preston. You know, I'm like many of you, I, I go to, you know, before the pandemic, I was down to London on a, on a weekly basis with my, with my work and I'm on the half five, six o'clock train from Preston and I'm down in London for, you know, for, for eight, half eight in the morning. It's a wonderful connection, but 
it's the links, it's the it's the routes into Preston that we have to sort out because it would it would be an absolute crime if we get HS2 to Preston and we don't have link proper links to Blackpool to yeah. down the M65 corridor up to the Ribble Valley and Lancaster, even down into to South Ribble. You know, we're we're just south of the Ribble Ribble. And the, the connectivity between Preston and South Ribble isn't perfect. It's far from perfect. You know, we have to sort these out now. And that would also, if we sort this now and invest heavily in the infrastructure, then it's a win-win, isn't it? And we become a real, real powerhouse. It's not just words. We do become a powerhouse. And the local authorities, particularly in central Lancashire, Preston and Chorley and South Ribble, we work really closely together already on everything, on our local plans, on, on everything that we, on the city deal. We, we know what's needed and we need to be really forceful now with our business community and make sure we get the in, inward investment, Frank. And it's, it, you know, every cloud has a silver lining. It's been appalling what's happened over the past 10, 12 months, but we've got to take the most of it now, make the most of it now, sorry, and ensure our recovery. And our recovery is through investment and supporting our local business. And in 10 years time, I want us to be able to look back and um, and say, do you know what? We're in a far, far better place than we were back then. I'm going to start bringing people into the conversation now, and Chessie's um, helped me out. In terms know, of off the typing came up at the bottom. I wonder what <laughs> yeah. the, the first one who's who's uh, who's made a comment, but it, you know, again, a bit I'm sure people are aware of the work that John's undertaking. You know, he's got a great legal firm in Harrison and Drury, but also he's been hugely involved for many years now in some of the fantastic work that's taken place in terms of those public-private partnerships that have been so important to Preston's development. Um, I, I think he's had many a sleepless night over the Winkley Square stuff in the early days, trying to get that off the ground. Again, Pete, I'd just say, hopefully, you know, because of the Preston partners, um, we're in a position where we can move a bit more swiftly in future in terms of uh, getting some ideas together but John you wanted to make a comment about connectivity and perhaps just tell us about how life's been in the in the legal world as well mate yeah um yeah I'll, I'll, I'll start with um um just the point about uh, the partnership working um because uh, when the opportunity to bid for the towns fund came in this was November, December 2019, which seems like a lifetime ago. Um, we were approached, uh, the Preston Partnership, to say, look, will you be the lead body on this? And um, so we started in really December, um, first meeting in January. The work we did in that first six months of 2020 with the pandemic striking in the middle of it um, was some of the best um, work in terms of um, public private thinking and action and actually developing the city investment plan and really it just showed what can be you know the art of the possible there um, that document which we do have some work to do to get it summarized down because it's a pretty bit bulky document but the themes in that are exactly what we need in terms of a vision that we've got to take to central government and say look Preston and, and the, the sorry, it wants to be this 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 and this and these are some of the projects that we've got in mind that are going to help us do that. Station Gateway being one that um, uh, just chimes with the, uh, the HS2. So that's, that's been um, a, a really exciting thing. The, the slight fly in the ointment here is that we submitted in June and uh, we were told we'd hear back in eight weeks and we are still waiting. We're, apparently it's imminent. But we were told it was imminent in October, I think, Peter. I think the last time. But anyway, um, it's it's been um, a great experience, and 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 so that has been something that I think all parties have learned from about the possible between public-private partnerships. Um, the point I was making about um, con connectivity is, um, and it chimes in with the point that Peter was making earlier about um, you know sort of uh, cars in Preston, as it were. Um, I think that what we want to be doing is looking creatively about getting people in and out without the car or, you know, because um, all, all, all major cities these days don't answer the problem of how to get in and out of the city centre or the station by roads. And we've got a, I know that in the, um, um, the, the transport framework, we've got the, the station at uh, Cotton coming online. 
Um, but I think that we've got to be looking at other ways of getting people in and out um, of the city centre. Um, I think that's that's really key, other than by car. Um, um, final point, um, law, how's that gone? Well, like everybody, I think, in back in March of last year, we just thought, are we going to be facing a situation where there'll be no work out there? Um, and it was very quiet for, you know, literally, I think, you know, looking back, people just stayed at home and, and just hunkered down to start with um, and uh, dealt with what work was still there. What we did see, though, and this just shows the resilience, I think, of businesses in Lancashire. I mean, our, our clients are SMEs in Lancashire, primarily. And as soon as they were able to, they're doing stuff, they were active. And um, it was, it was, it really showed the resilience of the businesses in Preston to say, you know what, as soon as we can get on and do something, we'll get on and do it. And they have been doing. And uh, we're a situation now where, um, you know, having slammed the brakes on recruitment straight away, we're going, we actually shouldn't have done that. We're now looking at this year saying, um, we've got a long list, you know, and, and that's really, you know, exciting that we, we were looking to recruit. Um, but I think that is a, a sort of a barometer really of, 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 the, of the business. Really, you know, there's obviously hospitality we talked about, it's been dreadful and, and, and retail, but that's one sector in a, you know, like the beauty of Lancashire is its diversity in terms of the, you know, the, the variety of businesses we've got. Um, and so we're, we are a bit of a barometer of, of economic activity. If there's stuff going on outside in the economy, then we'll, we'll be, you know, busy and we're, we're fairly busy at the moment. Good. Glad to hear positivity, John, uh, in all of those comments. So, Peter, Paul, do you want to just um, yeah. respond to, to yeah, John? Thank you, John. Just, just in terms of some of the things, John, and, and certainly Preston and traffic is, is clearly a, a major issue. And um, it, it, it's a complex set of, of, of um, criteria that, we, that we're trying to overcome. I think for me, part of the issue is around um, the fact that there are too many people who drive through Preston. I, I don't necessarily have an issue with people driving to to Preston, but there's too many driving through, and we 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 we're left you know the legacy, the toxic legacy. And somebody described it to me as once as a toxic river running through Preston, which is the Ringway, and and it really does split the city. And we, we're going to try and address that um, with with some of the the work we're currently doing and the Transforming Cities Fund that we've got. Um, but yeah, the Cotton Parkway railway station will clearly have a massive impact, and hopefully. Uh, you'll be able to get on a train there and, and, and get off in, in London or wherever. I think that's really, really important. Um, so, yeah, again, the Preston Partnership, over 100 businesses all together with the council, with UCLan, who, who we haven't mentioned yet, who are clearly a major player in the city and are doing some fabulous work uh, that we need to integrate with and, 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 and to get them more to, to become a better part of the city. Um, whether that's geographically, and, and I know people might think it's an inner city campus, but it is slightly remote from the city centre. Um, and we need to be we need to be ensuring that their graduates are retained in the city as well. And that's then around, it comes back around to, you know, I'm old enough to, to remember the adverts, and I'm, I'm going to watch to see who laughs, you know, about work, rest and play. And that really is important for, for those for those graduates that we want them to be back in Preston, work, resting and playing, uh, with with the necessary um, infrastructure for, the, for them to be able to do that. Fantastic. Paul? Yeah, I, I agree with Peter. You know, the, the arterial road network in and out of Preston is a is a challenge, isn't it? Whoever designed it in the first place, need, you know, we need to have a word with them because it, it, is a, it is a challenge for Preston. So let's think big. Let's think big. Why don't we put the second bridge in across the Ribble? You know, I, I've championed it. I, I think it would be a fantastic idea if we could get the government to invest in it because you can then that opens up the, the entire west of the county into Blackpool and file doesn't it you know and then it takes all the pressure off the A59 the A6 uh, links in with the M55 the MC, you know that that there is a solution to this you know and this is what the government need to to be looking at get that second bridge in across the Ribble and let's sort it and then you can imagine we'd have a huge really really effective bypass around the the entire city and then you know and I know some people challenge me at times, but trams, why, why, why can't Preston City and the, the, local, um, the local area, you know, why don't we have a, a, a tram network, you know, that's, and then you can remove, we can remove the vehicles from the city centres. You know, why, why can't South Ribble and Blackpool and 
um, in the Ruble Valley will be LinkedIn, and long was LinkedIn to Preston and the city centre, like many other many other big cities are. And so we, we just need to think outside the box, Frank. And but we need investment. Get this, get that second bridge in. Get the. It's very piecemeal at um, the moment. The approach to the the infrastructure and the road networks in Lancashire, isn't it? Let, let's have a big, let's have a discussion and let's get the infrastructure in that's needed because cross Lancashire, east to west links are awful as well, aren't they? So that that's what we need to do. And the hub being the centre of Preston, I'm happy to support Peter with that because Preston always will for me be the central hub of Lancashire. Just, just, just coming back on that, Frank. Before you go, in, just in terms of you know that that blame on, on on those legacy issues around transport and and design, there's no way we can sort of blame Cassidy Ashton or Eric Wright. Is there at this stage? <laughs> I'm sure they'll come in if, uh, <laughs> if they've got any responsibility or feel any responsibility. More importantly, they'd be happy to help repair it. Yeah. So, uh, so if there's any opportunities for them, let them know. Um, I, just in terms of the the bridge. Uh, Paul, well, the Prime Minister loves bridges, doesn't he? So I'd have thought you'd be pushing us an open door if you do well, go. We'll, we'll have a, Frank will have a tunnel if he wants a tunnel. We just need something across the west side there. And it's it, it, oh, look, imagine the opportunities that would would open up for, for the Fylde Coast as well and the, 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 the south of the county when it, the connectivity. And it's not, you know, in the big picture, it isn't that huge an investment, is it? It really isn't for the opportunity it provides to the, to the entire county. Yeah, I, I listen. I, I think the bolder the better. You, you know, in terms of some of the ideas that we've got to come up with, and you know, again, I had a discussion this morning with uh, Bayes around. Um, one of the guys kept talking about you know the amount of money that we were going to owe and and the debt that we were building, uh, and and I've said this for a number of months now. I don't see it as debt. I see it as investment. You know, even as business owners, we will know that, that you go out, you take money. Um, now, I don't treat that money that I've had from banks over the last 10 months as debt. I treat that as an opportunity for me to invest in my business. And we've got to look at the country's in, it, it, it finances in the same way. Uh, and if we don't invest now, we're never going to invest. Um, and if you look at what the President of the United States has announced, a $1.7 trillion programme of spending. And he said, that's the first lot. Uh, and yeah. we're being about, you know, I think uh, we're, we're still caught up in this idea of you, you've got to worry about what, you, what you're spending. Uh, if you've got three and a half million people potentially on the dole, you've got to start investing in your country and get them to work, whether it be yeah. building bridges or getting your hospitality sector back up and running or whatever. Anyway, it's it's not my soapbox today. It's you guys. So I'll, I'll shut up now. And Ian wants to come in uh, with some comments as well. Uh, God. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Sorry about that. Uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, reiterate some comments that, that, that John made. Uh, as a firm of accountants with 4,000 clients, the vast majority in the northwest of England. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate what John was saying, how resilient the businesses are in the northwest and Lancashire. Uh, I've got some clients who have had no income for a year. Uh, they're in the travel industry or they're in hospitality, but they're still going. The well-run companies, you know, the well-run companies are getting through this and... Uh, adapting with what's facing them and, and and like i said they're still there they're still you know trading or looking ahead uh in in this current difficult situation as a business ourselves like john uh accountants we're heavily recruiting at the moment there's lots of work out there there is lots of work there's lots of things happening and you know we're recruiting we were i think we recruited three people last week because we want to grow our business and, and deal with the clients and, and help them get the best out of a difficult situation. Thanks, Ian. Um, Alban, did you want to come in? I know you've, you've just dropped a, a comment in there about the bridge on East Cliff, which, yeah, I, I know that, actually. I saw that work. Um, so a, any comments that you have on what the, the guys have said this afternoon? Um, I have to say that the, the, the funniest comment, um, with respect, was from Peter, when he compared Fulwood to, to Leyland. Next time I have a controversial project in the middle of Fulwood, I'll just say, well, Peter Moss said it's just like Leyland round here. 
Uh, of course, uh, Chatham House rules. So I, I would never ever repeat that again, Peter. Um, I'll, I'll reiterate a lot of what John said earlier in terms of when everything started last March, everyone was put, climbed under the kitchen table and thought, how long is this going to last? We can't do anything. And, and everything just stopped. And then we all sort of took a deep breath and thought, actually, it's bad. It's really, really bad. But things are still happening. People still want to do things. The construction industry got going very quickly again. Some of it barely stopped. Uh, and we had a lot of clients who um, thought, well, we can't just sit in the hand. We've got to get ourselves ready because this will stop one day. And so the number of applications, new schemes that came forward was obviously quite considerable. So that's kept us busy. There has been a change. We are slightly less busy than we were exactly 12 months ago, but it's also going in the right direction and it's going up and improving. Um, just the, the, the quick comment I was going to say as a town planner, so I have to. There's some great ideas coming out from Preston, great initiatives, um, similarly in South Ribble, which of course is where I live, but it's making sure the planning system keeps up with that. There's been some great initiatives in Preston, in particular with city living, etc., cetera, Stonygate master plan and that is coming to fruition. But the general development plan is not gonna be able to keep up with um, the dynamics of, for example, the, the, the number of schemes we've seen recently for um, large warehousing storage and distribution Preston's going to start fi have to finding new land, um, South Ribble similarly. Now, obviously, the, the, there's some possibilities, but making sure that planning is not left behind and the planning policy team keep, keep themselves very, very busy to make sure that as things change over time, they're up to date and able to handle everything. Thanks, Alvin. I'll, I'll ask Peter and Paul for their comments on that in a moment, but I just wanted to um, bring Karen into the conversation because... Obviously, Eric Wright Group, well known, um, not just in Lancashire, uh, many other parts of the country as well. Karen, uh, just any comments from you today? Yeah, I mean, just reflecting on on the the pandemic, I think we were all a bit uh, stunned with what was in front of us. But I have to say, as a business, and I think the fact that we're a group of companies, we've um, fared well and and being very resilient i think some of the people touched before you know if you've got a well structured business um and you, you've got that stability it helps i think from the construction and and civils and water business and and residential they didn't stop actually on site um not that we did anything wrong you know immediately we're following government guidance but actually we're sort of trying to plan ahead because if you were just waiting for the guidance, you know, then you could understand why some businesses did stop. Yeah. Um, we immediately, so Andrew and I adapted and just worked from home, you know, never ever done this sort of stuff before. It was a bit alien, but we just sort of got on with it and driving the projects forward. I think um, we do a lot of work, public private partnership as um, Peter and Paul I'll, I'll know and, and others on the call and, and absolutely understanding that your priority had to be dealing with the pandemic. Um, we know, and I think you've done tremendous work in that and having worked for a stint in local government, understand how that is. I think the coming together has been fantastic. I think where we, we feel we can help is in that recovery and trying to keep things going. Um, and I think, also, it might seem a bit alien, but actually now is a good time. And I think Alvin touched on it as well, you know, to be planning for projects and 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 dealing with um, John or like this, dealing with all your legal agreements and getting everything all set up um, when it's challenging in terms of the marketing side and some businesses who, you know, sadly, particularly in the leisure and hospitality have had to furlough the majority of their staff. They're not going to engage, are they, about something new? They're going to be looking at existing premises, etc. But we will come out of this, I think, um, from a personal point of view. You know, I can't wait to physically get out, you know, and uh, and I think Peter made a really valid point about, you know, live, work, play. You know, it will all come back. And I think one thing that I've really felt as well is you certainly are appreciating, or not maybe, your local surroundings and, and thinking about supporting local, um, which I'm hoping, you know, bears very well for Lancashire. And I think the fact that people can work from home, you know, it's not the death of the office, but I think there'll be a lot more flexibility 
in relation to that as well. Karen, yeah. thank you. Peter, Paul, sorry. So, sorry, yeah, the, well, it's great to acknowledge Karen, you know, Eric Wright Group based in Bamber Bridge in South Ribble, you know, Collins Constructions based in Bamber Bridge in South Ribble, mm -hmm. BAE Systems, you know, in South Ribble. We've got some wonderful businesses and, you know, we are looking at our local procurement policy as well in South Ribble as we speak. And we, we, we've got, and it's, you know, answering directly, Karen, you know, we, we have to, as a local authority, invest more. And it's something that Preston have done, haven't they? They've championed this over the years with mm -hmm. the Preston model, but we have to invest more locally and we're absolutely doing that but the and, and it's a priority for the administration here now an absolute priority and um, but to answer album as well about the planning because that that's a very very interesting point obviously lancashire's sorry central lancashire we're on with developing our local plan it drives me mad how long it takes it really does i just cannot understand why a local planning process can take three five six years and by the time it's developed and published, it's out of date. It, it, we, it just need, there needs, there needs to be a really good look at this and understand how we can improve matters and speed matters up. But the, look, there's going to be some big decisions need to be made as well because the, you know, South Ribble, and I think I'm writing this, I think we're about 68% of South Ribble is Greenbelt. Yeah. And we're running out of space, big time for development. And so, you know, where I'm going to go with this, Frank. It, it, there's, there's got to be some big decisions about potentially potentially releasing some of the green belts yeah. to to build the homes on that we need to build the employment that we need you know because one of the critical problems that we have in south ribble is in the brownfield areas in the lost Dock halls the penwithams the bamber bridges the leylands it, it's it, we're saturated the infrastructure and the it just cannot take any more development and so we're going to have to start looking further afield because you know the government's setting us really challenging targets for homes but we, we, we're going to have to keep we have to develop so you know we, with some big decisions coming in the next year or two and we're going to have to find the appropriate areas to 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 provide for the the, the needs of the community and it isn't easy but we're going to have to do it and we're not going to shy away from doing it Paul, well, thank you final word to you peter before we uh, close well, the session today that, that's almost come full circle for me, Frank, in terms of you've come back to the, the devolution bit and, and the artificial boundaries surrounding Preston and South Ribble aren't conducive to doing the sort of thing that, that Alban or, or Karen have, have talked about there. And, and if, if there's a necessity about, about allocating land for specific purposes in, in specific areas, let's not restrict that by some kind of strange artificial boundaries over a river or, or, or whatever it might be. And I think that's why things need to change. Um, and and yeah, you know the bridges are very important. Um, I, I know the county council are fully aware of, of why we need that, that that extra crossing. John's thoughts around um, you know pressurising and lobbying government. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think perhaps if we yeah certainly on that western side, if British Aerospace at Wharton would want to join that, I'm sure they would be a powerful voice in terms of in, in terms of uh, Whitehall. Um, Alban's point around around distribution and warehousing, etc. Yeah, we're, we're aware of that. There might be one or two uh, uh, interesting things coming up in the very near future on that. Um, but for me, it, ultimately, all these things and, and the recovery and, and, and how we progress are around people, and it's about those personalities and about about those relationships that we have. And and you know, this sort of thing, frankly, is is vital in terms of keeping those relationships going, and, and it's around not myself, Paul, whoever it is, talking with, with you know, with the guys on, on this call and others. And, and, and if, the part, if those partnerships have to work, they will have to work through, through those personalities and through those people being able to, to contribute and get on with each other and maybe have the disagreements from time to time, but actually being able to trust each other that we're all here for, for, the, for the right purposes. And that's around, for me, you know, that's around that, that passion for Preston and the improving Preston. If everybody's got that, as, as their, their first thoughts, then we can only continue to go from strength to strength. Lovely. Thanks very much, Peter. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for your time this afternoon and everyone for joining uh, the call. We haven't even mentioned the culture bid. We haven't mentioned the Eden project. Loads going on in Lancashire. Uh, and I did mention very briefly the Lancashire Independent Economic Review, which has been undertaken by Mike Emrick and uh, Metro Dynamics. Mike is joining a call with the uh, all party parliamentary group in a couple of weeks time I think we're able to open that up to our members Patrick 
isn't doesn't look as though he's oh he doesn't look as though he knows. I think the MPs are happy for um, for them to be uh, viewed on screen by uh, the people who vote for them. I believe well should be anyway. So we will invite people along to that. I think it'll be a really interesting discussion. Uh, and again, I would say that you know in terms of uh, the bridge, on a serious note, I think it's a great idea to get uh, a private sector group group of people together but equally I think that all party parliamentary group now is going to be a great vehicle for us uh, to feed those sorts of initiatives into because we've got you know some MPs there who are quite happy to put the party politics to one side uh, and argue Lancashire's case uh, and so maybe that would be a good uh, first test for them uh, to see what we can do with that group and to see how influential it can potentially be. So uh, again, Patrick has helpfully put in a, a link to our uh, mailing list there, which will give you all the details and information of future events. We can't wait to be live again. We got loads of people that we want to introduce you to, uh, and we've been tempted to do it virtually, uh, but we just think that some of the speakers that we've got available would be wasted. So we prefer to wait until we can get them around a, a, a dinner table or a lunch table. Uh, and do it then. So listen, I'm looking forward to, to getting back up to Lancashire and, uh, and enjoying a good night out there. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thanks once again to Peter Moss and Paul Foster for being with us. Round of applause. Well done, guys. And we'll all catch up soon. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, everyone.